My name is Ramakrishnan. I am a software engineer. I have two questions for you. The first is, what does Islam say about donating organs after death? Is it okay or is it prohibited? Second question is, what does Islam say about atheists? That's it. The brother has two questions. I think non-Muslim are one they're asking to, no problem. The first question is, what does Islam say about donating organs? Second question is about atheist. As far as the first question is concerned, what does Islam say about donating organs? There's no direct verse in the Quran or any say hadith which says whether organs can be donated or not. But there are various conferences that have held in Saudi Arabia, in Malaysia, and various different parts of the world. And the scholars have come to a common consensus that if three things are fulfilled, then organs can be donated. Number one, the person who requires an organ but natural, it should be a major benefit to his health. He can receive organ as long as it's a benefit or saves his life. Point number two, the person donating the organ, after he donates the organ, it should not be a major loss to his health. For example, if I donate my heart, I will die. So I can't donate my heart. But the doctors say that out of two kidneys present, a person can even survive with one kidney. So if my mother has a kidney failure, both the kidneys have failed, I can very well donate my one kidney to my mother, even she lives, even I live. But naturally, after a person dies, if he wants to donate any other organ, that is permissible. But if he's alive, he should not donate any part of the body which will cause a major damage to his health or a loss of life. And the third criteria is, it should not be for money. No one should sell organ. If all these three conditions are fulfilled, then organ donation very well can be done. As far as the second question is concerned, what does Islam have to say about atheist? As far as I'm concerned, whenever I meet an atheist, are you an atheist, brother? He said, no. Whenever I meet an atheist, the first thing I do is I congratulate that atheist. People may wonder that why is Zakir congratulating an atheist? The reason I'm congratulating an atheist is because most of the human beings, they usually do blind belief. He is a Hindu, because father is a Hindu. He is a Christian, father is a Christian. Many Muslims are Muslim because father is a Muslim. Now this atheist, he's thinking. He may be coming from a religious background. His father may be pious, but he does not believe that how can they be a God who requires to eat, a God who can die, a God who can lie. So the reason I congratulate the atheist is because he has said the first part of the Islamic Shahada, Islamic creed, La ilaha, that there is no God. The only thing I have to do is illallah, but Allah, which I shall do inshallah. So half my job is done to a non-Muslim who believes in some other God, first I have to prove to him that the God is worshipping is wrong. And after I prove to him that the God is worshipping is wrong, then I have to prove to him about the correct God. Here, the atheist, half my job is done. He already agrees in the first part of the Islamic Shahada, La ilaha, there is no God. The only thing I have to do is illallah, which I shall do inshallah. The first question asked to the atheist is that, what is the definition of God? If anyone says there is no God, to say there is no God, he should know the definition of God. If he does not know the definition of God, he cannot say there is no God. For example, if I say this is a pen, is this a pen? No. It's a book. To say this is not a pen, you should know the definition of pen. Some people say, no, Zakir, I know this is a book, so I can say it's not a pen. I said, no. If you know the definition of pen, I will say, is this a kitab? You say, no, it is not a kitab, because there's no definition of kitab. To say it's not a kitab, you should know the definition of kitab. Because kitab and book is the same. So to say it is not a pen, you have to know the definition of pen. You may or may not know the definition of a book, correct? So similarly, to say there is no God, you should know the definition of God. So now this person who is atheist, he is believing, oh, that God, he requires to eat, he can lie, he fights and he loses. He does not believe in a God. So I say, even I don't believe in such a God. La ilaha. Then I tell to him the correct concept of God. 
And the correct concept of God is mentioned Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which I shall discuss in the last day of the conference, inshallah. And that is on 20th of January. So what he's doing? He is rejecting the false God. Then I ask the question to the atheist, that if suppose there is equipment which is brought in front of you, who no one in the world has ever seen, no one knows about it, and if I ask the question, that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of their equipment? So the atheist will tell. The first person who will tell the mechanism of this equipment, who no one in the world has seen, it is the creator. Some may say the manufacturer. Some may say the inventor. Some will say the person who has made it, maker. He may say creator, maker, inventor, manufacturer. Whatever he says, it will be somewhat similar. Don't grapple with the words. What he says, accept it. Then ask him. Then repeat the lecture which I gave, which I don't intend reading, that how did the universe come into existence? So he will tell about the Big Bang. Then I'll tell him that when did you come to know? He will tell you in 1973, yesterday in science, 30 years back, 40 years back. I will say, what you are talking about the Big Bang you came to know 30 years back is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned it? He will say, maybe it's a fluke. Don't argue with him. Continue. What's the shape of the earth? He will tell you, previously people thought it's flat, now we know it's spherical. When did you come to know? He will tell you 1577, when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth. Men, 300 years back, 400 years back, 450 years back. The Quran mentions 14 years ago. Who could have mentioned it? He will say, oh, maybe your prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was an intelligent man. Don't argue, continue. Light of the moon, is its own light or reflected light? He will tell you previously we thought light of the moon was its own light. Recently we have come to know a couple of hundred years back, it's reflected light. It's mentioned in the Quran, Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 61. Light of the moon is reflected 14 years back. Who could have mentioned it? Now we'll pause. Don't wait for the answer. Continue. In school, I was taught that the sun was stationary. It did not rotate about its axis. You'll have either mentioned the Quran. I said, no, that's what I learned in school. But the Quran says the sun and the moon rotate, which we have come to know recently. In school, 25 years back, I was told the sun did not rotate. The Quran says 14 years back that the sun rotates, which science has discovered today. Who could have mentioned that? There'll be a pause. Don't wait for the reply. Continue. So all the scientific things I mentioned in my talk, after each scientific fact, ask him who could have mentioned it before. And finally, he will tell the creator, the manufacturer, the inventor, the maker, this creator, this manufacturer, this producer, this inventor, we in Islam call as Allah. That's the reason today, science is not eliminating God, La ilaha, it is eliminating models of God, illallah. Therefore, Sir Francis Bacon, a very famous philosopher, he said that little knowledge of science makes you an atheist, in-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. So, with this help of this lecture, Quran, Modern Science, you can prove the existence of God scientifically. Hope that answers the question.